This is Mike Grubbs. He lives in Brooklyn, New York. That's his dog, Buster. He's a musician, a pretty good one, too. Grubbs is the lead singer of Wakey Wakey. It's an indie band. In 2010, he got his big break. He was discovered by the TV show One Tree Hill. They featured his music on the show and even wrote him a role, Grubbs, the bartender. You're feeling a bottle of something. That role wasn't far from reality. Despite his musical success, he still bartends to make ends meet. It's so funny because like, I'll go into a bartending shift and people will be like, hey, what are you doing today? Like, oh, today I was an iTunes hot track or whatever, you know? I could learn to make you steal. They're like, why are you bartending? And I say, I don't know. Why don't you pay for music? <laughs> today, it's no secret. Fewer people purchase music. Instead, they stream it on services like Spotify or Apple Music. The services are free with ads or charge a monthly premium to listen uninterrupted. This digital transformation from owning to streaming hasn't been without growing pains. Taylor Swift famously pulled her entire catalog from Spotify late last year. She threatened to do the same for Apple's music service, but changed her mind when the company revised some of its policies in response. The streaming services have been great for a lot of consumers who yeah. just can get music in any way they want. What yeah. would you say your relationship with a streaming service like Spotify yeah. would be? I think like the, it's complicated would be my <laughs> number one answer. Your Facebook status yeah, with Spotify would say it's, it's complicated. complicated. Like, okay. um, Spotify for, for me in a lot of ways is a really fantastic service. Um, the one really basic problem, and this is a really complicated issue to really wrap your head around, uh, but they don't really pay artists enough. And, and that's just a simple fact. But a not so simple solution. Why don't they pay us enough? You know, is it because there are not resources to pay us from? They can't charge more than $10 a month for a premium, you know, streaming service, which is crazy. If people stream my music, then I get 0.7 cents, right? So if you take a penny and you cut a quarter out of it, what's left of that penny is what I get for every time that you stream. Um, so if I want to buy a cup of coffee, someone has to stream my song 714 times. The difference is, if you purchase a song, an artist gets paid once. When you stream, they get paid each time you listen. Spotify says it's paid more than $3 billion to rights holders so far. That number would increase faster if it could get more paying customers. The company has around 75 million active users, but only about 20 million of those pay each month. The rest rely on a free ad-supported tier of the service. Andreas Katzenbass is the founder of The End Records. It's Grubb's label and one that has successfully navigated the tumultuous industry for over a decade. Do you think we'll ever get to a point where artists will make as much, you know, on these streaming services as they made back in the day on albums? I don't think Spotify can pay or can ask a user to pay more than $9.99. The only way it can happen is increase the amount of subscribers and expand on a global basis. I think within a few years, we're gonna be in a much better position than we are now. Today's streaming services provide a wealth of data about fans. It's data that artists and labels never had in the past. We always joke about what it would be like to tour before GPS and be like, we don't even have a phone, you know what I mean? Like, how does that work? I feel like that's the way artists are gonna look at data. You know, they're like, I wonder what it was like before you knew that like, 46% of your fans were male and that you had a huge cluster of people that really liked you in Singapore. How'd that happen? I don't know, but maybe I should play a concert in Singapore. Thanks, Spotify. Royston Langdon is the head of artist relations for Spotify. He's also an artist himself. He's a lead singer of Space Hog, an English rock band popular in the 90s. Do you think Space Hog would have done as well in this streaming world? I think we would have done considerably better than we did. I think Space Hog was creatively a great force. I think the thing that we struggled with was communicating uh, what that was to the industry that surrounded us. Grubbs just released the first single from his next album. It's called Homeless Poets. It's a song about dreamers. The, torch and lift us the idea ultimately is to not one day be the homeless poet. I'm hopeful. I really, I really believe in this new album. I really, and I really believe in our fans to be like, music has worth and we should probably pay for this. The single was recently featured on one of Spotify's recommended playlists. You're looking at 100,000 streams within the first week of yeah. putting this out there. How would that compare to say back in the day if, if you know, 100,000 people bought that? that song. 
I don't think that if I'd put this album out before Spotify, 100,000 people would have bought it this week. But if they did, if I didn't have a label, I would have made $70,000. Uh, on a streaming service, that's worth about $700. But, but it's a double-edged sword because had Spotify not put it out on this list, maybe yeah. people wouldn't have discovered it. Exactly. But the other side of it is, you know, hopefully I get 100,000 streams this week. Hopefully I get 100,000 streams next week too, and the week after, and the week after, and the week after. If that actually were to happen, you know, like it, it would be pretty nice.